Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan are in the spotlight during China's annual political season, the two sessions, with the draft to national security legislation for the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region submitted to China's top legislature. What do the proposals mean for Hong Kong's future and the one country, two systems principle? How is Macau developing in the face of the pandemic and what lies ahead for cross-strait ties? I'm joined by Professor Richard Wei Xin Hu, Dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences at the University of Macau, and Professor Chen Shen Yin from Institute of International Relations at National Chengchu University in Taiwan. But first, we begin with an interview with Dr. Jonathan Cho Kum Shun, Chairman of the San Wang Group and a Standing Committee member of the CPPCC National Committee on Proposed National Security Legislation for Hong Kong. Mr. Chai, as far as I know, Hong Kong police arrested hundreds of protesters uh, in Wan Chai and Causeway Bay uh, just the last weekend. So most on the charge of illegal assembly. If national security law for Hong Kong takes place, what will happen? And what are the challenges uh, for the Hong Kong police, do you think, in law enforcement? I just feel that Hong Kong is a place that it is a uh, a uh, place that we have freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, and freedom of press, that we have many rights for that. And uh, But, you know, uh, under the national security law, we are not supposed to have to uh, split the country. That is to be exact, is the Hong Kong independence, or subversion to the country, or terrorism. You know, what happened in the last Saturday, and uh, some of the rioters, uh, they did something which is um, uh, vandalizing the uh, public facilities, the banks, the stores, and uh, seeing some of setting fire and attacking uh, the uh, passengers, you see. I think what they have been doing is uh, no good for Hong Kong. And uh, they have breached the law in Hong Kong so that the police enforce and they are arrested. I think uh, Hong Kong is a place that uh, we are bribed by the rule of law. Uh, wherever in front of laws is treated equal, therefore uh, they are arrested. As we know, the draft of the national security legislation for Hong Kong was submitted to China's top uh, legislative body, the NPC. Well, the aim is, as you said, to bring stability to Hong Kong and stronger rule of law. But there are some protesters say this will, uh, in, in the end, threaten the one country's two systems and a de facto end of one country, two systems. What do you say? I don't think so. I think the reason for the uh, central government to impose the national security law is to uphold the one country, two system principle. You see, they have been always talking about Hong Kong people governing Hong Kong. We have the high degree of autonomy and they will want to keep it. Because of this, Hong Kong has stability and prosperity in the past 23 years. I think it's really a success that everybody agreed. And, uh, but what they are thinking of is, uh, when there is uh, such a national security law, then uh, there will be no more freedom. They have no right to assembly and for demonstration. And that is not the situation. I think the young people, maybe they are misled about this. Some of them even say that it is one country, one system. I don't think so, because Hong Kong is a business city, mm. and uh, we are businessmen. Uh, I myself, we are the capitalists. Uh, under the one country, two system, we still maintain the capitalist economy. And uh, uh, the uh, uh, situation is the same as uh, before. I don't, I don't think that uh, it would be an end to the uh, one country, two system. Uh, but do you see any challenges for Hong Kong people understanding uh, the intent and the contents of this law, especially the younger generation? And what do you think needs to be done to help each side better understand the other? I just feel that besides the uh, Chinese government, uh, the Hong Kong government and also the Hong Kong business people and Hong Kong the residents like us, I just feel that one country systems, two systems do good to Hong Kong in the past 23 years. Therefore, Hong Kong was so successful. And we have the right of uh, freedom of speech, press, assembly, and even demonstration. But 
for all these uh, 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 things, it needs to be done in a peaceful way. We cannot have demonstration, but at the end of the day, it becomes a violence. Uh, they they uh, vandalize all these public facilities, uh, attack the, uh, the electrical building and all this. I think uh, this is no good for Hong Kong, and the uh, central government cannot allow that. Uh, let me quote uh, Mr. Leong Chun Yin. He was uh, vice chairman of the National Committee of CPPCC and former chief executive of Hong Kong SAR. He said, don't estimate the central government's will to deal with Hong Kong issue. Considering that Hong Kong Legislative Council will hold an election later this year, what is your assessment of the politics in Hong Kong, how it will develop in 2020? I don't want to speculate about the electrical uh, election, uh, but the situation is this. Uh, the NPC uh, decided to enact a national security law. Once it is announced, I think that they won't change their mind. It, it will be done. And uh, I just feel that Hong Kong people should understand this is a need uh, that the country to enact its own national security law, it, which is the same as other countries in the world. You see, most of the Western countries, I, I can say most of them, they have the national security law. Therefore, China have the same law, I think is uh, uh, very reasonable. And uh, I just feel that we need to have Hong Kong uh, residents to understand it is good for Hong Kong. Why they want to have it? We want stability. We want prosperity. At the moment, because there was some misunderstanding, the young generation coming out, and you see, there are so many rioters destroying so many uh, public uh, uh, facilities in Hong Kong. It is no good. You see, we are businessmen. We want to have a calm and stable environment for us to, to do business. But you see, for every week, they uh, vandalize all these things, and we cannot have a quiet and uh, stable place to do business. It's not only good for, no good for us, it's also no good for the international business community. Therefore, uh, I hope that they really understand the situation. There is some worry that the relationship between the SAR government and the central government will be changed because of the passage of this new law. Do you think so? I don't think so. You see, uh, once uh, the announcement of the NPC is going to impose the new law, uh, the whole Hong Kong government, of course, led by uh, the chief executive, uh, Mrs. Lam, uh, she supported uh, the, uh, the, the, the such a national security law, which is uh, good for the country. And also, Hong Kong has the constitutional uh, responsibility to have the Article 23 also. And after that, most of the Hong Kong senior officials uh, come out and say that they support it. Therefore, I just feel that it is good for Hong Kong. And uh, I don't think that uh, Chinese government would like to intervene into Hong Kong's uh, affairs. Chinese government, uh, more importantly, is the national security. Therefore, this law is only for national security and nothing to do with other things. For other things, I think the local judiciary system will work ourselves as before. And we know that Hong Kong has long been a, a port city and a financial center in Asia. But some U.S. politicians are threatening to cancel Hong Kong's privileges in terms of trade. And first of all, do you think Americans have reasons to do that? And how will Hong Kong respond? Uh, I don't know what the US or West, other Western countries will do in the future. But I just feel that they should really think that Hong Kong is a business center as before. You know, Hong Kong, uh, traditionally, we are mainly uh, doing business. It is an international financial center and commercial center. That's why so many uh, Western countries' headquarters, they uh, have it in, in Hong Kong, including America, Japan, UK, and many, and many countries. They have all the headquarters in Hong Kong. Therefore, if anything uh, is imposed on Hong Kong, it may affect also not only the Hong Kong business community, but also the international business community. It won't do good to anybody. Therefore, we hope that it uh, won't have anything which is too good to Hong Kong. COVID-19, obviously it has uh, brought a pause to the street protesters uh, uh, in Hong Kong. But some people say uh, this new legislation 
might bring them back to streets. First of all, what is your understanding of the dynamics of these uh, kind of a street politics? And do you have any understanding of the points of views of those protesters when they are marching on the street in Hong Kong? I think for the uh, protesters, uh, they are looking for, of course, more freedom. Uh, they worry about that if there's a national security law, uh, they lose some of their rights in Hong Kong. But I think that they have to understand uh, the uh, reason for imposing such a law is national security. National security means don't split the country. Then it's Hong Kong independence. No, it doesn't work. Second is diversion to the country, terrorism, and also having the foreign uh, forces to intervene in the Hong Kong internal affairs. If you do not touch all this, it's nothing to do with you. Therefore, I just feel that they shouldn't be worried about this. The reason for the law is uh, for the national security only. Other than that, our own judicial uh, system still works as before. Therefore, I don't think that there's any uh, 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 special difference about Hong Kong. I myself have full confidence about the future of Hong Kong. One country, two system, it works. We have the freedom of speech, freedom of press, but, but and all this. I know that you've been running your businesses in Hong Kong for decades, but over the past year, we have seen destructive and disruptive behaviors on the streets. And there is no sign that it's running out of steam. What is your assessment of the end game of all these? Mm, we hope that uh, when there's the national security law imposed in Hong Kong, uh, there's no violence. That's very important, you know. Hong Kong traditionally, we have freedom of demonstration or, and also assembly. Uh, they can be in, uh, in the, uh, going out to protest in the street. If they have different opinion, they can voice out, we accept, doesn't matter, but no violence. Uh, in the past one year, what's wrong was they are going to vandalizing many things, they get the gas bombs, uh, they attack the people and all this. It doesn't make it good to Hong Kong. We need a stable and peaceful environment for us to live, you know. Everybody have their own, uh, how can I say, uh, uh, thinking, uh, they, what they want. Uh, but we have to respect others also. We have 7.5 million people, you know, and uh, every people would like to have a very peaceful and environment to live and to do business. And I think it's important for international business community. Hong Kong is an international business center. We have so many foreign uh, people in Hong Kong. We also would like to create a better environment for them to do business. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Chong, for, you. for your insights and analysis. Thank you. Uh, that's uh, Mr. Chong talking about Hong Kong. Uh, now let's move on to Macau. Uh, let's turn to Professor Hu uh, for more talks on, on Macau, uh, how Macau has been doing. Uh, I understand that uh, yesterday uh, Mr. Hall's passing is a big news in, in Macau uh, on the back uh, that Macau has been suffering COVID-19 in the first few months of this year. How is Macau hanging, Professor Hu? Uh, Macau is doing very well. And um, I uh, heard your conversation with Mr. Tong. I think uh, Macau is quite a different story, you know. Uh, the Macau basic law also have Article 23, which is exactly the same as Article 23 of Hong Kong basic law. Mm. Now, in this Article 23, uh, the uh, uh, Macau SAR government is asked to act on its own to uh, to legislative laws to prohibit act of um, uh, subversion, uh, cessation, uh, treason, and sediction, and the uh, theft of state secret, and to prohibit. Uh, foreign uh, political organization activity in Macau and also uh, the local political organization's connection with foreign foreign uh, uh, organizations. This, with, with this seven uh, 
uh, crime. I think the same listed in the uh, Hong Kong SAR's uh, basic law. Have, uh, Macau. Yeah. The, have, have any people yeah. in Macau offended uh, uh, and 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 been punished because of the national security law enforcement over the past? Uh, 10, 10 years, because I know it was passed in 2009. Yeah, it passed in 2009. Macau Legislative Council enact a law on safeguard national security in 2009. You are right. And uh, since the law uh, put in place, uh, as far as I know, uh, so far, there's no any sensational uh, cases uh, being uh, any person being charged uh, by this law. Mm. But that doesn't say uh, there's no act of um, uh, related to national uh, security uh, violations. You know, there's um, there's everyday activities cross border. Uh, within the society, there's also other crime, but uh, we have enough local law to deal with these activities. Mm. But when we talk about national security uh, crime, which is very serious one, mm. the seven act listed, uh, you know, in Article 23, and also now is already uh, being part of national laws. So, so, so we are talking about this is very serious business. And uh, uh, any place, any government, responsible government, need to have these legal weapons, yeah. you know, to prevent serious crime, which is uh, subverting the central government, and also treason, sedition, and uh, those uh, kind of uh, very serious crime against uh, mm. Uh, not just uh, yeah. local government, uh, and also central government. Sedition, secession, and, and subversion. And, and, and those protesters and, and opposition leaders, they say uh, the national security law for Hong Kong will violate and, and threaten one country, two systems principle, because that means uh, any Hong Kongers will be uh, investigated and prosecuted and probably tried on the mainland. Do you think that that's a legitimate concern? I think it's uh, what they claim is a, is a big claim. And uh, I think uh, based on Macau's experience, uh, so far, uh, I think uh, the freedom of speech, freedom assembly, and uh, other freedom uh, people still enjoy and exercise very well. And more importantly, peace, stability, and prosperity has been maintained since the handover. And I do not see uh, enacting a national security law by uh, SAR government is in contradiction for those freedoms. Mm. You know, you need to have, uh, you know, strike a right balance. And also uh, the law you know, I, I, I consider national security law, you know, Macau already passed 2009. It is, um, it is um, more preventive, mm. you know, it is a deterrence against those people really have intention to really subverting mm. and uh, treason and sedition and then, and then also uh, trying to secede the, the the, the, uh, the Macau yeah. from the motherland. And, and Professor Hu, I was in Macau uh, six months ago uh, for the anniversary, 20th anniversary celebration. And I talked to some Macau mm -hmm. people. I feel that they are very happy or at least uh, feel at home being a Chinese living in yeah. Macau. But it seems it's not the mm -hmm. case in Hong Kong. That's why people say, what can Macau tell Hong Kong about identity and, and national education and being at home with their own identity of being a Chinese living in a, in a SAR? Yeah, you know, uh, your experience is right. Uh, people in Macau, uh, I think, have a very uh, strong national identity. You know, the majority of the population here identify themselves uh, with, uh, 
with uh, with with China. You know, as as Chinese identity is very strong, and uh, there's uh, so they consider. Uh, if they are separate from the motherland, from the mainland, they cannot, uh, you know, cannot survive. Mm. So there's, uh, they cannot uh, be uh, live without the support of the mainland. So uh, the economy and, uh, you know, everyday life has been closely integrated, you know, cross border, you know, between Macau and the mainland. So, and uh, so there's a high degree of consensus, uh, national security is very important and that we need to, uh, to, to have enduring uh, peace and security and the prosperity, which is depend on the national security. National wow. security is not just for Macau, but it's for the whole country. So national security cannot be separate for, you know, between the SAR and the mainland. All right. Thank you very much. Very insightful. Uh, thinking. Thank you, Professor Hu. And now let's turn to uh, the Taiwan issue. Uh, Professor Yen, uh, with the leader of the Taiwan Authority, Tsai Ing-wen, now in office uh, for a second term, what are the developments uh, for cross-strait uh, relations, do you think? Well, I think, you know, uh, she did the same thing as the first term. Uh, claiming that she will maintain status quo, which means that she will not give a, you know, good excuse for Beijing to use force against Taiwan. But at the same time, her claim, you know, of trying to expand Taiwan's international space or, you know, trying to uh, shift Taiwan's economy less dependent or less reliant on mainland or Hong Kong market, uh, this has not been very successful in the past. Mm. So we are facing a grim reality. On the one hand, politically, she is advising Taiwan's young people that there is a separate identity that Taiwan is going to pursue uh, further, you know, not just secession, maybe independence in the future. But at the same time, the international reality is not uh, allowing that to happen. So. Also, in terms of joining international organization, we have seen in the past uh, two months that Taiwan was very, uh, you know, kind of hopeful that it we will be invited to WHA, but at the end, it's not. Mm -hmm. So this is a reality. Any kind of international participation, I think there should be a understanding or acquiescence from Beijing. But since we are not dealing with Beijing, because we don't have, you know, the government will not acknowledge the 92 consensus. Yeah. So for this to continue to maintain a positive relation with Beijing for Madame Tsai, I think it's just castle in the air, yeah. uh, which is not going to happen. And now with COVID-19 and also the lack of uh, communication between the two, you know, our China airline only flying to four cities now, and it, it, this uh, will really hurt Taiwan's economy yeah. uh, already in the past. But, but on the uh, other hand, the Mr. Yen, from China it seems uh, uh, Taiwan now, is capitalizing mm -hmm. on yes. the international situation, as you mentioned, because uh, the friction between the Chinese and navies oh, uh, navigating course. in the strait, mm -hmm. obviously, she's using that. Yeah, she is not just using the you know the, the the South China Sea issue. She is using also look at the you know the COVID nineteen issue as well, but also Hong Kong. Right, last mm -hmm. year you know when her public opinion poll was so low, and then suddenly because of the protests in Hong Kong, and then you know we we said in Taiwan she pick up a weapon and then help to promote her into office easily, but. Hong Kong issue right now is a, another concern for Taiwan because we are almost like the international power saying something they support Taiwan, but really they, they are not really doing that. Mm. You know, it's only in words, not in action. So people in Taiwan right now found out that we supported Hong Kong's democracy movement, but when People talk about should we have a refugee law, allow Hong Kong people to come to Taiwan. Immediately we find the government was very hesitant about this. Uh, the government is not interested in helping Hong Kong people. So again, we are just like our 
you know, so-called friends that we, uh, we speak in words, yeah. but we cannot take any action. I think Hong Kong people might be disappointed with Taiwan's response so far. Uh, talking about the future of Taiwan, Mr. Yen, uh, Beijing's message is loud and clear. Be it, yes. be it Hong Kong, be it Taiwan, it's part yeah. of China. There is no talks with Taiwan Authority unless they admit uh -huh. the one China principle. But it seems uh, that premise is not accepted by the Taiwan authorities. And nothing will happen in the next four years. Well, yeah, I think that nothing will happen because uh, think about this. You know, the, the previous administration under the National uh, Nationalist Party under the KMT, uh, the two sides at least has this 92 consensus. 92 consensus, there is an implicit one China principle there, but it has been reduced only to 92 consensus. So it's much easier for Taiwan, uh, you know, to talk to China and then uh, without being forced to insist on one China principle because 92 consensus is there. But Madame Tsai would not, mm. uh, you know, accept anything the previous administration uh, agreed. So if you don't agree with this consensus, uh, you can, I think, you can still negotiate with Beijing with a new consensus, let's say 2020 consensus, but maybe Beijing will insist on one China principle and more explicitly there, mm -hmm. and would, would Taiwan accept? I think DPP would not. So the only thing that Madame Tsai is doing that will probably get her support from the United States is that she is not going to pursue uh, the jury independence, she would say, I will maintain status uh -huh. quo. But that status quo uh, is totally different from a, uh, six, uh, four years ago in 2016 from 2008 to 2016. What about the status quo of the uh, Taiwan so, uh, political landscape with uh, increasing pressure for KMT and maybe the shrinking of diplomacy for Taiwan in the coming days, in the coming years? Well, yeah, well, I think, you know, what happened right now is the ruling party has raised a generation of so-called separate identity, very strong, party, you know, DPP, and we, we are joining the United States a lot of times, demonizing China. So you have done a lot of that, and you also promote independence, but at the same time, they are realist. The government knew they cannot pursue this goal, so continue to maintain uh, status quo. I think there is a con in inherent conflict here. Is you raise a generation saying you're going to do one thing, but in reality, political reality, uh, you cannot. And then you want the election con by continuing to, you know, kind of playing this. How can they explain kind of this sentiment. kind of contradiction? But to I their think people. eventually. Well, that's what I, you know, as a professor, sometimes I ask my student, I said, hey, this will not be psychologically or mm -hmm. mentally healthy for you because uh, the leader tell oh. you one thing, but they are doing another. Yeah. Uh, so eventually, I think Taiwanese people probably will see through this okay. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we're running out of time. Thank you very much. Very uh, insight, uh, very insightful discussion. Uh, you're you. welcome. Uh -huh. Mr. Yen. And you've been watching Dialogue here on CGTM. I'm Zhu in Beijing. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.